Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. We've talked to him on and off over the years, but I find what he promotes to be so fascinating, he's here again. You're on <laughs> Brooks, glad, glad to have you. It's good to be here. All right, you're associated, of course, with the Ayn Rand Institute. And I, I, I love people who are scared about Ayn Rand. Yes. I mean, I mean there, there are all these other authors, there are all these other um, philosophers, there's even people who dabble in economics and morality and stuff. None of them get the hatred. I mean, all you need to do is go into any American college yep. campus and go, well, what about that Ayn Rand? And I do that yeah, all the time. Do, right? Yeah, you do that, so you do that <laughs> for a living. For a living. <laughs> Why is this author who did Atlas Shrugged and The Fountainhead, We the Living, Anthem, and a whole bunch of philosophy books that I, got to be honest, I cannot read her nonfiction. I, I just, I can't. It's just too dry for me. Yeah, I can't, yeah, can't yeah. do it. Um, why does she get such a hateful reaction? Well, because she challenges our most fundamental beliefs. And she challenges people left, right, center, doesn't matter. She challenges the entire political spectrum, not just on the politics, not just on the economics. There are lots of people who do that, right? But she, she challenges us on the ethics. She challenges us in epistemology and how we know stuff. She challenges our metaphysics. She challenges religion. So she really takes on everything. She takes on 2,500 years of thinking in the West, and she says, most of you have been wrong, and, and here's an alternative way of looking at the world. And well, that's, there's, that's there's, a challenge. There's lots, that's of people, a there's lots of people who say you're wrong. There's lots of people who, who come up with different... I, I live in Boulder. There, so, there are fruitcakes there who, who say the world is not what you think it is all the time. There is something threatening. There is something dangerous. There's about Ayn Rand's philosophy. Because she's not only saying you're wrong, she's saying what she thinks is the truth. And that means you have to live a different life. You have to live a different life personally, she, or she suggests you live a different life personally. And the way you look at the world would be completely different. So if you take, if you take for example, the new atheists, right? The new atheists became very prominent uh, in arguing for atheism. But when you actually look at their politics are, I'm and sorry, economics, what are, what are new atheists? These are the sounds like a rock remember, group. Yeah, you remember they they they, they, they should have become a rock group. Uh, uh, Sam Harris and Dawkins and oh, uh, Hitchens Richard Dawkins and, and Hitchens. Those guys they called themselves the new atheists because right. they got they had a shtick going and yeah. it was very it was quite profitable for them. And they were they, okay, so they challenged everybody on the religion stuff. But then when you look at the morality, you look at politics, you look at the economics, standard middle of the road, nothing, right, bland. Ayn Rand challenges you on, on the religion, challenges you on what the purpose of life is and what you should live for, challenges you on, well, what kind of political structure we should have and how does the economy work, even challenges you on what is art and what is good on what is bad art. So, and every major question that people have, she comes up with an answer that people are not expecting and it forces uh, you to either but it's think different. or act differently. It's different than just and it's that. Hostile. Now, okay, so what do you let's, think? Let's go, for, let's go to the hostile part <laughs> yeah. of that mean all right it's not just not just greedy yeah. all right not just greedy yeah. but, but her philosophy is downright cruel yes you know in her world there are no children there you know there is no charity it is doggy dog you are judged and you will judge and your satisfaction is the only thing that counts it it is very easy to lampoon as cruel it is, but some of the things you said are true to her philosophy, and some of the things you said are not, and, and to her novel. So uh, nothing in her philosophy is anti-charity. Uh, it's just not particularly pro-charity in terms of being the most important moral virtue. Uh, nothing against children. I have children. Almost all the people I know who advocate for her philosophy have children. Um, their children in Atlas Shrugged. They're just minor characters in the book because, <laughs> because she was writing a book about something else, and children right. didn't fit into the story she was writing. Um, and she didn't have children. That's true. But... But none of that, it, it, so, but it is true that what she says to people is, you should live for yourself. You should live for your own flourishing, for your own success, for your own happiness. That should be your moral purpose. And the, peop, the, the reason it's lampooned is because for 2,000 years, we've been taught that the reason, the purpose of life is sacrifice. What's noble is to live for other people. It's their well-being that's important. Uh, the whole morality, the, the conventional morality is about other people. Oh. The, the ultimate virtue is being selfless. And in order to make that credible to people, because nobody actually wants to live to other people, nobody actually is selfless. So in order to make that credible, we create this, 
this uh, a pretense of the only alternative to being selfless is to being a lying, cheating SOB, right? And then Ayn Rand comes and says, wait a minute, there's a third alternative. You can be rationally long-term self-interested, and lying is not in your self-interest, cheating is not in your self-interest, and you can live for yourself without being that monster that people like to portray. People have a very hard time let's, let's throw, with that idea. In, very hard time with that idea. Let's throw in what economists would euphemistically call externalities. All mm -hmm. right, so, you know, I'm living for myself, Love and, and I'm, I'm digging for gold and gulch gulch because, man, it's, it's all about my satisfaction, and I'm just digging away, and I'm blowing up hills, and I'm uh, using chemicals, and all this stuff flows into the river, which then goes downstream, and that's somebody else's world. Uh, but I'm, I'm living for myself. The guys downstream, they can live for themselves too. Mm -hmm. you know, therefore, the philosophy is bankrupt because it doesn't take into account those people living downstream, living, b living in the wasteland you've created while you're, you're seeking your own selfless, selfish satisfaction. So it's exactly the opposite. Right? It's, it's, uh, it's systems of government and systems of morality that tell you that you have to care about others and sacrifice for others and be selfless that are the filthiest, dirtiest places on planet Earth. It's actually systems of government that encourage people to, through property rights, to pursue their own self-interest and to exploit their piece of land the way they see fit that are actually the cleanest places on planet Earth. And the you're, reason you're, you're for that politics. is, that the reason for that is, is, well, but that's because Politics is a manifestation of a particular ethics. We get socialism when we have a selfless ethic. We get capitalism when people are focused on the pursuit of their own happiness. There's not an accident that that is in the Declaration of Independence and the country we've got as a consequence is the United States of America. It's those selfish founding fathers who are focused on people's right to their own life, not to, not to the common good. There's no common good in, the, in a Declaration or the Constitution. There's the pursuit of your own life you own your yeah. own liberty and happiness. Let's get to externalities. It's very simple. If the world is divided into private property, which it should be, there should be, you know, people ask me about the problem of the commons. Right. The solution to that is not to have any commons. The solution to that is to privatize everything we can privatize. Yeah, you can't, it's a problem with the air, but other than the air, <laughs> you can pretty much privatize everything. And we know from common law going back a thousand years that you can't dump your garbage in my backyard. I'll sue you and I'll bankrupt you and that's it. And there are laws about this, and these are laws to protect property rights. I cannot pollute a river if you own the river. When the river is public property, then it becomes a problem because it's owned by nobody. But if the river is privately owned, which in the West, and we're in the West right now, there was the beginning of law to define private property over rivers in, right. you know, in the 19th century. We stopped doing that once the government came in and took over all the land in the West. But if we actually had respect for private property, externalities wouldn't, all these negative externalities wouldn't exist. And of course, what people really don't talk about is all the positive externality created by my selfish pursuit of my own well-being. It's, it's what, it's that, that selfish pursuit of people's own well-being that creates all the goodies that we have around I'm us. Gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep pushing you on this. All, all right, right. I got that's it. good. Right. Yeah. There, there's some externalities you don't see for a while. There's some externalities that you that even in that private world, we're, we're not going to get to the land being privatized. Not in my lifetime. Uh, all, although a lot of not in my lifetime either. But that's the world we should be striving we're, towards. I'm there. Right? I'm there. And, and, yeah. So, but my nuclear reactor um, uh, and I dump the waste on my land. You might not notice the damage for a long time. The pollutants I put in the, the, here. The, the, the pollutants I put in the air, yeah. you know, it is distributed across the globe, and therefore it's not my neighbor next door, but it's it's the the world in general. So, so you run a you run a not for profit. I run a not for profit. And I can imagine in a world of laissez-faire capitalism, I can imagine non for profits that that go around and say, you know what, we're going to monitor air quality, and we're going to find who's polluting the air, and we're going to sue them on your behalf. So there are wonderful voluntary ways without, getting, without creating a massive governmental infrastructure and government agencies and regulations up the kazoo in order to make sure that people have the kind of information they need to make sure that you are not harming me. But it also there's an underlying assumption there. And that assumption is that I live... I, I'm producing, and I don't care about the rest of the world, and I don't care about my children because they're breathing in the air as well, and I don't care about my grandchildren because they, they, they're going to be radioactive, and that's bizarre, right? If you're self-interested, if you're selfish, you care about your life. 
You love your life. And by extension, you love life. You love other human beings. I, I am much more generous. I am much more caring as a selfish human being than I would if I were selfless. Because I find selfless people resenting the fact that morality only gives them stars, only gives them credit when they don't think about themselves and only when they help others. Now, I, because I know what my life is worth, when I see somebody, I, I, I don't want to hurt other people. Why would I hurt other people? Put aside the politics of it and, and the, the rights issues and the legal stuff. I want to trade with other people. I see the enormous value, and this is true of most people. When we look at businessmen, what we see are greedy, selfish people. And that's why we regulate them. That's why we control them. Not because they've done anything bad. Indeed, 99.9% .9 of businessmen would not pollute, would not steal, yeah. would not cheat, would not do any of these that's things right. in pursuit of profit. The great one panel cartoon. Guys, houses are fire, just flames burning everywhere. Firemen are coming with hoses and ladders and buckets, and they're all rushing to the door, and the guy who owns the house goes, no, 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 guys, I'm a libertarian. Don't, don't, don't come and help me. Yeah, but that's yeah. nonsense. That's, that's yeah, a caricature, right? It's a caricature, but, nobody, but in, nobody the turns down world, help. in the real world, in the real world, self-interested people want to commit. Right. Want, want to com we we get huge the real benefits world, from where we people. are today. Yeah. Today, <laughs> I still need the police. I still need. I'm not an anarchist. Let's be very clear. I am not an anarchist. I and believe. By the way, I believe government is a necessary good. Let's let's use that term very carefully because people use anarchist as 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 a, a complete uh, epithet. It's it's it's. But it's a are, bad thing. Right, I agree but, with him. But there are <laughs> but there there are economic anarchists. I think there, there are capitalistic anarchists out there who believe that over time. Uh, we're going to get fire departments. We're going to get, you know, we're going to. I think they're be nuts. Private. I think they're nuts. So, uh, so wait, say that again because and, I think and it's fire important. departments. I, I'm not including fire departments in the government because I agree you could get. We used to have voluntary fire departments. You can have private fire departments. You can deal with fire departments without government, but you cannot deal with police. You cannot deal with the military. You cannot deal with the court system, outside of government. So the what only about, purpose of what about government. disputes. You're that's, on my property. That's court. Right. That's court. And that, so, that's government too? Absolutely. All right. The final arbitrator of those kind of disputes has to be government. Because otherwise, how are we going to resolve it? Well, like in the Wild West. I'm going to carry. You're going to carry. We're going to go out at high noon and, and, and duel it out. Not a good society to live in. So force is the one thing that it's the job of government to monopolize. It's the only thing that the government should be doing. It should be there to protect our rights. And what is a right? The right is to be free. A right is a freedom from coercion. The only job of government is to protect me from coercion. It's to protect me from people polluting my river, my river. It's to protect me from people destroying my property. It's to protect me from people who want to loot me and, and, what and about rob polluting, me. And so what about polluting our air? Yeah, so air is another way in which I personally had damaged. If I'm putting stuff into the air and you can't show me damage, then, you know, how, by what right do you stop me from, from doing what I'm doing? You have to be able to show damages. If you can show damages, Sure, you can stop them from doing it. Let's talk about morality and business, in that you know, capitalism and corporatism are really two different things. Yes. And they get conflated all the time by uh, you know, those, those bastards who make money. Well, we forget <laughs> that while the left loves jobs, they hate the people who create those jobs. Exactly. You know, and they hate the benefits from what is created because somebody makes money off of it. But there's also a lot of truth when they scream about the cronyism that happens among that world. I see it every day here in Colorado. Yeah. I see it in business. I see it with tax increment financing. I see it with corporate welfare and regulations that you can't have this, but you'll have get more credit if you yep. buy this battery operated something. And so, so it, and that is evil. It is. But that's not capitalism, no. is it? No, and that's why I hate when people call it crony capitalism. No, capitalism is not crony. Statism is crony. So. What drives cronyism is state power. When you give the state authority over people's business, when you peep, give the state uh, the ability to regulate and control, people are going to fight back. And when they fight back, they're going to hire lawyers, and they're going to get enmeshed in politics, and they're going to try to manipulate the system in their favor. My favorite story here is the Microsoft story. You know, Microsoft. Early 90s, Microsoft. I don't know if you know this, but you've got an accent. Microsoft. I do have an accent. Yeah. I'm sorry. Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> so Microsoft was the largest company in the world at the time. All right. right. 
How much money did they spend on lobbying in Washington, D.C.? Zero. Zero. Owen Hatch, a Republican senator from Utah, brings them in front of the Senate, Senate, Senate committee, and he yells at them. You guys have got to start spending money here. You guys have got to build a building here. You've got to have a presence here. You've got to hire lawyers here. In other words, he says, you've got to bribe me. But right. we don't do that in America, so we call it lobbying. Microsoft says at the end of this hearing, yeah, you leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. We're not interested. We, we don't need Washington. We're, we're running the largest company in the world. We're, we're actually producing values here. And, we and, don't need a mess with you And by the guys. way, the only thing we create are ones and zeros. Yes. It, yes. It, it, yes. it happens in the ether. It happens yeah. on hard drives. Yeah. We're you not, know, we're what, not, do, what do we're we hit our lobby? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So six months later, knock on the door. Uh, we're here from the Justice Department, and uh, we're here to go after you because you're violating antitrust laws. Oh, what did we do? You're giving away a product for free. Yeah, I don't know. The audience could, probably doesn't remember, but we used to buy Netscape for 70 bucks. You had to download right. it, a, a, a browser. You had, to, you had to pay for it. In order to get on the Internet, yeah. you needed a browser. a browser. Which you paid for, for Netscape. Right. And Microsoft said, oh, we'll give you one for free if you buy DOS. You'll get Internet Explorer for that, for that. They got harassed by the Justice Department for over 10 years. Their business was almost destroyed. Guess how much money they spent today on lobbying? How much? Tens of millions of dollars. They've got a beautiful building. You know the Cato Institute? Oh, yeah. Building right behind the Cato Institute is the Microsoft building. It's a beautiful modern building, all glass, about equal distance from the House of Representatives and, 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 and uh, the White House. And now they manipulate the system. They go after Google. They do this. But who brought them in? I mean, the power we give government, the only way to get rid of cronyism, in other words, is to make politics impotent. That is to separate state from economics. So we need a separation of state and economics. The smaller the government, the less regulations, the less controls. If we had a corporate tax of zero, then there'd be no cronyism. But short of that, nothing you do will solve the problem. You're also missing a simple market uh, reality here. When I try to get into the market, even in your world where I can get into the marketplace yep. easily, there's no barrier, I'm going to have to compete in order to get a market share. Mm -hmm. Now, if I already have a market share, mm -hmm. I can either compete with you, upstart, but I don't want to do that. Yep. Then I've got to convince you know, the millions of people who are my potential customers to choose me over you. It's so much easier to go to City Hall and convince five sitting but councilmen to regulate the taxi industry and make sure that nobody else is involved in it. But this in is this. why the Constitution should be written in a way that they can't regulate the taxi industry, right? So if you, this is my point, as long as politicians have power, people will go and seek to try to get favors from politicians, whether it's unions, whether it's businesses, whether it's all kinds of people will but go I, to them. And my point is the only way to stop that process, there's no other way. There's just no other way. It's to say to city council, you know what? I'm not sure exactly why you exist, but the one thing you cannot do, you cannot regulate businesses, you cannot tell them where they can be, you cannot zone, you cannot interfere in the lives of individual citizens. Maybe we don't need you, or maybe we just need you to oversee the police and that's it. All right, all right, stop there, stop there. <laughs> Love it. Um, which unicorn is going to ride in with the magic wand and get us from here to there. Ayn Rand. So, Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand. I mean, it's, this is about education. This is about education, education, education. These are shortcuts. There's no unicorn that's going to write in. It, it's, it's our job to get us there, right? It's your job, my job. It's our job to go out there and, and, and teach and educate and, and promote. And if we don't, then we're never going to get there. And even if we do, there's no guarantee but, but that even, we get even there. Even if we do, and, and listen, you've dedicated your career, I've dedicated mine, to fighting for, for this ideal. And we work in a, I work in a world of Democrats and liberals and unaffiliated and bills that come by and lobbying and this yeah, and that. Yeah. And I try to weigh in my voice towards this idea of freedom. All right. But I'm up against I know. guys who own the taxi cab company, yep. uh, the uh, um, government-run agencies that don't want to see any, any competition. They can afford the lobbyists. They can afford that beautiful new Microsoft building, and they can play that game. And we're sitting here shooting rubber bands at the moon saying, you know what, if we just put out a nice little paper, we're going we're gonna to see all this thing well, crumble. This is why I don't do policy, because I would be <laughs> unbelievably frustrated if I did, because that's, that you're describing the world as it really is. I believe at the end of the day, everything is driven by fundamental ideas. 
We would not have had a United States of America if not for Enlightenment thinkers, if not for Spinoza, Locke, ultimately Adam Smith, and everybody in between, Voltaire and Montesquieu and all of the French Enlightenment. Without those thinkers, there's no America. That's where the action is. The action, and we're losing there too, let's be clear, but the action is at our universities, the action is philosophy departments, the action is econ, the action is where fundamental ideas are being discussed and debated. And if we can't swing that, all the policy work won't help us because people vote against their self-interest all the time, against their long-term self-interest, their short-term self-interest. I don't consider that self-interest. I consider that suicide. But the short-term satisfaction, you used that word earlier, which I would never use. The short-term satisfaction, they work all the time. But against their long-term self-interest, liberty and freedom is in everybody's long-term self-interest. That's something nobody realizes, nobody cares about, nobody works towards. And unless we can instill those ideas at the very basis of society, we lose. And we're losing. The fact is we're losing. We've got, we've got an administration in Washington that's supposed to be on the right, which is, you know, wants to tell me who I can buy stuff from and who I can't buy some from. You also have an administration on the right that's saying, hey, California, you can't make your own crazy-ass regulations. Mm. That's a step this way. You've got an yeah. uh, administration that's pulling back all the, not all these, but a lot of the regulations that you're railing about. Yeah, but some, know, of them, some of them, and, 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 and here and there, and at the end of the day, but, but I, I, I'm you know, not sure that that's all wiped out by a stupid trade war and, and, a, and an attitude towards trade. It's not the trade war that's bad. An attitude towards trade, particularly international trade, that says trade is a zero-sum game. That attitude, if that attitude is inculcated into the American public's mind and into the Republican Party's DNA, then we're in for a long ride towards right, hell. So the frustration is, <laughs> you priests, because that's what you are. Uh, you're I, a priest. I, I am an evangelical, even right. though I'm an atheist. Right. I'm now an you're, evangelical. You're, so you're, you're a priest <laughs> and you come here. One, you only exist because we spin off enough wealth that somebody can give money and support priests. Well, I'm, I'm, as I told you earlier, no, so no, I'm, I'm sorry, not, the finance I'm not, world. I'm, look, not I'm not talking about you no, personally. But, I'm just talking about philosophers. Yeah, but the fact and, is philosophy shapes the world. You would not be here. Right. We would not be here if not for John Locke. I agree. agree. We would not be here. If economic, economic, economics wouldn't be here and not for Adam Smith. They, that's where the action I'm not disagreeing is. with you, but I am adding something. <laughs> I, yeah. The addition is this. Not only do we need to fund the priests and philosophers to teach the next generation, yes. we have completely surrendered the political battle mm -hmm. to engage those ideas. You mentioned that, hang on, you've been, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, 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 No, it's an Israeli, Israeli thing. This is really, we, we, we can't let other people talk, we have to talk over them. No, that's Italian, that's Italian, my well, friend. Well, Middle East, yeah. uh, Mediterranean, it's all, all right, the so, same. So, um, um, but we, we are not equipping our foot soldiers to go out there and do it. We're not, we're not translating this into politics. We have surrendered that, which means our uh, educational systems are nothing more than propaganda organizations, mm -hmm. our higher ed especially. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there, needs, there needs to be a marriage of the philosophy with the political. And this is where it gets messy. Yeah. And a lot of people over here would rather be right than win. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with that. I don't disagree with that. I mean, I, I mentioned I, I, I teach here in Colorado at the leadership program, the Rockies regularly. So we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're teaching the people right. who actually go out into, 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 into the uh, trenches. Uh, you know, we do policy. I mean, I, I, right. I, I make fun of policy, but you have to do policy because you, you have to survive to win another day. You have to, you have to push back any way you can push back. All I'm saying is, You've got to have it all. You've got to talk about the fundamental ideas and you've got to talk about how they apply. And you've got to, and this, I, I wish people did this, you've got to project an ideal, particularly to young people. And we, we, you know, young people want to be idealistic. Young people want to believe in something. And the socialists are very, very good at this. They're not timid about telling them what they want. We want communism. And, and they rally them up. They don't call it communism. but They, they, they call it, we're going to save the planet. Yes. I want to save the planet. we're going to save the planet too. through socialism, yes. through democratic yes. socialism. Yes. We're going to save the planet. And therefore, you can be part of something yeah. much, much larger and than yourself. we need to do the same. We and don't when do I go to all. campuses, I say, I want to save the planet. I want to save humanity. I want to save mankind. And you do that through capitalism. It's the only system that has ever brought anybody out of poverty, and it's the only system that has created the kind of wealth we have today, and it's the only system that can actually promote human well-being in the long run. That's the message I have to hear. And when I talk about capitalism, I'm not talking about the system we have today, which is crony, 
with cronies. I'm talking about this capitalist ideal, this laissez-faire capitalism, and I and I push them in that direction. Now, are all of them going to convince? No, but we got to right. stop pushing in that direction. We've got about a minute and a half, so let me lead lead them to the trough here. Then, all right. So somebody's listening. Go. This guy's crazy. Uh, he's he's worshiping. people. He's worshiping so, uh, some broad who's also crazy and mean and all the rest. <laughs> But I tell you what, because I'm so superior, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something on this. Not a whole lot, because you know, nobody can pick up Atlas Shrugged. And, well, you know, everybody should, put it that way. And they do, right? right? They do. Half but, a million copies sold in 2009. But that's not a pamphlet. That's not, that's not, that's not I'm, I'm, I'm getting curious. Oh. To help them get from there to here, what's the next step? Where should somebody go to look, to, to learn? Nobody's going to read Locke. Uh, how do you get them to tempt them in that direction? What is the sales that you're going to do? Well, I mean, by the way, this is a way to plug your site. No, by no, the no. Way. I get it. I get it. Uh, Einrand.org. That's the website of the institute. But spelled A Y A Y N R A N D dot O R G, and uh, go follow me on YouTube. I I do I do podcasts uh, almost daily. I release videos, short videos, long videos, all kinds of videos, and you'll learn a lot about the world around us. At least my perspective on the world around us, and you know, sometimes I'm entertaining as well. Uh, certainly I'm radical. If nothing else, I'm consistent and radical. So yaronbrookshow.com, Y-A-R-O-N, brookshow.com. All right, if somebody was gonna pick up one pamphlet, one quick read, one comic book, what would oh it be? Oh my God, Com pamphlets. I would say Ayn Rand has uh, these short two essays. One is called Man's Right, and the other called The Nature of Government. They, they, they used right to come in a pamphlet on. together, Man's Right and the Nature of Government. You can find them online for free. Got it. Man. Always fun, you're on. Hey, yes. read me in the Denver Post. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Check out the Independence Institute at thinkfreedom.org. We'll see you next week.